So in this last video, I'm just going to go over page seven and page eight. What I would encourage you to do is do page eight on your own. That's the harder of the two questions and then come back and watch that. Obviously, I want to have page seven here, too, if you, you need a couple of examples to go off of. But I'm not going to show step by step. I'm just going to talk through the key here. So in question eight, we have these seagulls landing on different things. Is there evidence that they show a preference for where they land for the state step? Seagulls do not show a preference for where they land. Uh, the alternative would be that seagulls do show a preference for where they land. That's one way you could state it. There's a random sample of 200 seagulls. 200 is less than 10% of all seagulls. I'll get to the expected counts in a minute, but they're all at least five. How did I calculate them? I took the observed. There was a total of 200 seagulls. We expect 56% to land on sand, 29% mud, 15% rocks. Found those percentages. Those are my expected values. So the expected values are all at least five. Again, I can list them 112, 58, and 30, greater than or equal to five. I can do that. Conditions are met. We're going to do a chi-squared goodness of fit test with two degrees of freedom, three minus one, two. The do, I'm going to show the observed minus expected squared a few times, summed up. And then I'm just going to plug the observed in list one, the expected in list two in my calculator. And then I'm going to do that chi-squared goodness of fit test. It's going to spit out my test statistic. My p-value notice, it's in scientific notation. It's p-value has to be between zero and one. So please don't write the p-value 7.2. That's impossible. And then the p-value is less than the significance level. So we reject the null, which means there is convincing evidence that the seagulls do have a preference for where they land. Follow-up analysis, the biggest contribution to the um, chi-squared value is the rocks. I don't know what it is. I didn't write it down. There's a lot less seagulls that landed on the rocks than we expected, 11 versus 30. Okay, so that's page seven. Page eight, the one that I wanted you to tackle. Those of you who, who took AP Bio who are, are taking it, this should be like, whoa, yeah, we've talked about this. Boom, right on. So the state is going to be the distribution of eye color and wing shape is the same as what the bio, biologists are predicting. The alternative would be that the distribution is not the same. Random sample of 200, I think, what is it, fireflies, I think? Fruit flies. 200 is less than 10% of all fruit flies. The expected counts are a little tricky here. They said they have a ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. So that breaks it up into 16 parts. There was 200 fire, no, fruit flies. So 200 divided by 16 is 12 and a half. So then to get the expected counts, I'm really doing 9 times that 12 and a half. So I'd expect 112 and a half of them to have this certain um, X, they called it, gene, and then 3 times 12 and a half, 37 and a half would have the Y gene, Z gene, and the other, the 1, the 12 and a half is going to, we expect to have that W gene. So these four expected values, make sure you explicitly state these are expected because all expected counts are at least 5. Your AP reader needs to know which ones you're talking about. So conditions are met. We're going to do a chi-squared goodness of fit test with three degrees of freedom. We have four different genetic traits, minus one. So four categories minus the one. I'm going to set up my test statistic with the observed minus expected squared over expected. Sum these up. I get about 6.19. Just doing it in the calculator with the observed in list one, the expected in list two, and running my goodness of fit test. P-value ends up being 0.1 approximately. I could do chi-squared CDF from 6.19 to infinity with three degrees of freedom to get this, or just run the test on my calculator. They had a 1% significance level. So because the p-value 0.1 is greater than 0 0.01, we fail to reject the null. We don't have convincing evidence that the distribution of eye color and wing shape is not the same as what the biologist predicted. All right, that's it for section 11.1 .1, chi-squared goodness of fit test. Hopefully you found these videos informative and you feel pretty confident moving forward on how to do a test. All right, have a good day all.